Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into the first Spring 2025 update from Gauss Weathervid. So here we go again, after being uh, off from the long range for the past few weeks, we're uh, back on the bandwagon. The long range uh, bandwagon is uh, rolling again, and uh, this time we're moving into Spring updates and that will culminate in the spring forecast at the end of February. So, of course, we reached Gaswell's winter 24-25 forecast at the beginning of uh, December. Then we took a few weeks off after winter updates. We always do that. <laughs> As it is quite a long and exhaustive uh, season, you know, for, for the winter updates. So, our sound team, Gab, needs to have a little bit of a rest from uh, the long range. However, we always get back on uh, the long way, on, on, on the long range track in uh, January January. And here we go. We're beginning a short season of spring updates. So as I say, we'll culminate in a spring forecast at the end of February. So I shall get on with your first spring update for you in a moment. Just say so that you enjoy my content on the channel at the moment. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, everyone, uh, for doing that. Thank you, Shadow Richard. Thank you, Shadow Ricardo. Oh, oh. Senator Ricardo, Mr. Traw, for um uh, for the gift here. Lovely, 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 lovely. We're going to be naming the bird. I know what bird that is. People will know in the comments. We've got lots of twitchers in the comments. So I wonder if it's a finch. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, let me know in the comments what it is, but we're going to be naming that in a couple of weeks. So get your thinking caps on. And <laughs> we're, we're going to name a bird in a week or two. We don't need to name a bee because we've already got the bee today, which, of course, is... B after our own lovely B who posted me uh, comments and is a uh, you know a, a regular member of the Gals Lovers community. So B is for B name, but uh, we've uh, got a name of bird and uh, we'll do that in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Shadow Richard. Love it. Thank you, Shadow Richard, for uh, the uh, gift there. And thank you uh, so much. Oh, I just bit my tongue. Thank you so much to um, Shry and Bruin as well. They're getting all of the years uh, together for us. So, uh, try to do an amazing job. As always, hashtag Tingav, uh, working your way together to produce the long range for for us all. So thanks to Shrine Brand, thanks to Richard Shaw um, for the help on the first spring update. Right, okay, well let's crack on and uh, we're going to begin with, well for this update, this first update, we're doing December to spring date. So we're going to start off with the central England temperature. So this is a CC page from Hadley going all the way back to 1659 but we're interested in 2024 and specifically in December 2024, which has a CT of 6.8. So for the first set of analogs, for the first spring update, we're going to be looking at springs following December's with a CT range of 6.2 to 7.4. It places December uh, 2024 nicely in the middle of that range. So why don't we do that? Let's have a look then. So the first spring we've got is uh, 1954. This is following uh, December CT of uh, 6.2 to 7.4 in 1953. So spring 1954 follows a cold winter though. So it does have quite a lot of dawn bucket. You have a cold winter, you tend to have a cold spring a lot of time. Not always, um, but a lot of the time spring will be cold if you have a cold winter. Uh, the pattern, you know, will, will carry on. At least for a while. So, uh, this spring, 1951, has a lot of high pressure to the north, low pressure south, east winds. Of course, spring is the most easterly of the uh, seasons, and April, and particularly May, are the most easterly of the months. So, um, it doesn't look that out of place, but I think there was quite a bit of cold weather in the spring of 1954. But we've got a spring of 1955, also following an even colder winter. Uh, this was quite a cold spring as well, with high pressure out towards green ice and low pressure to the east, winds regularly coming in uh, from the north. Our next spring is 1986, so a long gap then. Uh, 1985 was next time at a December CT range of 6.2, 7.4. And, of course, then we uh, have uh, the spring of 1986. This is a very wet spring, quite cold a lot of the time. As well, again, that is following on from uh, a cold winter. So, um, and a particularly cold February. So, uh, very unsettled, very wet spring, and often quite cold. 1989 is also quite a cold spring. This one follows a very mild winter, though. But the spring itself has low pressure in the uh, Atlantic into the west of Europe 
as well. So, I think it's relatively mild in March, but April turns cold, though. Uh, it's quite a cold and winchy April, having 1989. But then the summer starts getting going in May, so it is actually one of those analogs. It doesn't tell you a great deal about the spring, uh, to be honest, but uh, the, the summer actually begins very early on with uh, quite a bit of very warm and occasionally hot weather in May 1989, and then that just carries on right way through to the autumn, very extended summer beginning in the spring and going on into the autumn. Our next spring is 1995, so this one with high pressure in the Atlantic, and then we've got low pressure away to the east. Winds often coming in from the north. Has some wintry snaps in March of 1995, even though the winter of 94-95 was actually a very mild winter generally. Um, but it does have a few cold snaps in the March. There's a cold snap in April 95 as well. It gets progressively hotter and drier though as spring goes on. Of course, it's a very hot drought summer that we have in uh, 1995. We've got 2007. Um, this is a, a dry and warm spring, or at least March and April were. There was, was a flip that uh, happened in May of 2007, starting off uh, the Dale News summer. Um, but uh, we had summer in April, actually, in 2007. So talking about cold Aprils, this one is actually uh, a very um, dry and often really quite warm April that we have in 2007. At the time, it was the warmest April record, but I think that was superseded then uh, quite quickly by 2011. Uh, then we've got 2014. This is uh, a mild, dry spring as well. High pressure away to the east. So after a very wet winter, we have a, a warm, dry spring in 2014. 2019, quite a nice spring as well. A bit of a northern blocking seal, but also high pressure down here. I think spring 2019 often has a lot of dry and warm weather. As does spring 2022 with uh, high pressure uh, away to the east. The winds often coming in for a southerly or a southeast direction. That's a very warm spring that we had in 2022. And then finally we've got 2024, last spring. Uh, and that one has low pressure part, more or less over the top of the coach, so much more uns unsettled spring there that we have in uh, 2024, quite a wet spring. Right, let's put all of that together then. And this is how all March is combined. Looking following a December CT range of 6.2 to 7.4. Overall, a very unsettled signal for these marches with plenty of low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. Not sure it's a particularly cold signal, but does look like uh, quite a wet March in favour there. April looks a lot drier. Um, the only thing with April is the high pressure is tending to be uh, between Iceland and Norway, which could bring the wind in from the northeast quite a bit of the time. So certainly a significantly drier signal for those Aprils. Possibly a rather colder signal as well, though, with some uh, perhaps rather annoying late season cold snaps. And then we're back into much more unsettled conditions again for the uh, maize with low pressure in off the Atlantic. Probably quite a mild signal, winds from the west, from the southwest, but uh, certainly quite a wettest signal. And all springs combined following December CT range of 6.2, 7.4 looks like that. Plenty of low pressure in from the Atlantic into the west of Europe. So overall, an unsettled signal for those um Springs, particularly, that is down to what's happening in the marches, of course. April is a rather drier signal that we see there. Right, well, that went all right, didn't it? That's our first set of analogues of, uh, <laughs> of uh, 2025. Hold on. <coughs> So sorry, everyone, but we're going to go on to our second set of analogues uh, next. And again, we're continuing with the uh, December uh, data. So let's just pull this out a little bit. Do -do -do. There we go. So uh, we're looking at December, England, and Wales precipitation uh, to spring data for the next set of analogues. So in December 24, we had a central in temperature of 8 point, no one to talk about, we had an uh, England Wales precipitation, sorry, of 89.3 millimetres, that was an, an anomaly of 86% of average, so it was actually slightly drier um, December than average, not that far away from uh, long-term averages really, but was slightly on the drier side, the uh, average value is 103 millimetres that we see. 
um, uh, there. So we are looking for our second set of analogues at Springs following December's with an England away precipitation of uh, 79 to 98 millimetres. Again, that places December 2024 nicely in the middle of the range. So let's do that then. Why not? Um, <laughs> we're going to start off with the spring of 19. 52. This move high pressure away to the north and winds coming in from east. It's a very late blizzard and severe cold spell that happens at the end of March 1952. Otherwise, I think that's a relatively nondescript sort of spring though. 1954 is uh, back again with uh, high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south. Lots of easy winds. I think at least early on in the spring, there was quite a bit of cold weather as well. Um, we've got 1955 showing up as our next one with plenty of low pressure away to the east high pressures out there and winds coming in from a door for a north easterly direction so again that one is quite a cold um quite a cold outcome that uh, we see there uh right let's move on to our next year which is going to be 1969 following uh december england where case range is sent down to like eight millimeters 1968 this was low pressure now, high pressure is to the north. Winds coming in from an easterly direction. So, uh, that has a very, very cold February in 1969. I think some of that carries on into the early part of the spring, 69. Otherwise, it's relatively mild this spring, I think, that we have in uh, 1969 with quite a lot of easterly winds. 1970 is our next spring. Lots of low pressure to the east. High pressure is out to the west. And again, winds are coming in from a cold northerly uh, direction with that one. Very cold in uh, March of 1970, especially early on in the month with uh, a, a real snowstorm in the opening days of March 1970. I think the spring does get warmer though uh, later. We've got spring 1975 showing up next. This has a cold April. Plenty of low pressure south and east high pressure out to the northwest. This is in the middle of the drought years of course. So quite a dry spring. Atlantic is blocked off uh, but does have a, a, a quite a long and potent cold spell actually in April of uh, 1975 I believe. We've got 1977 uh, as our next spring. Oh, this one with uh, high pressure away to the north, low pressure is to the south and to the south. These winds coming in from a uh, uh, northeast direction. So quite an unsettled spring, uh, that one. I think quite a mild a start to the spring anyway in 1977. Just quite quite a mix of the spring, quite a, uh, a wettest spring there. 1978 is also uh, a mixed spring uh, with high pressure up here. Low pressure is out there and out there. Um, oh, I, you know, it has quite a potent cold snap in uh, February of 1978. I think that runs out of steam into the spring. Overall, just rather wet, a relatively mildish sort of spring that we have in uh, 1978, I think. 1982, also quite a mild and mixed spring. Uh, low pressure north, high pressure to the south. Winds coming in uh, from the west, rather forgettable sort of spring. Back to them. 1985 follows on from a cold winter from 84, 85. It is quite a cold spring as well. Regular cold snaps, regular snowing intervals in March, even into April of 1985. With a bit of a blocking signal continuing uh, around Greenland and winds often coming in from a northerly stretch. That's quite a cold spring. 1991 is a much drier spring, plenty of high pressure bridging in from the Azores into northern and west Europe. That's quite a warm, dry spring, I think, that we have in 1991. And then 1996, also following a cold winter with low pressure to the south, high pressure, that's changed in colour, is blocking between Greenland and Scandinavia, very easterly spring. And regular cold snaps and snowy intervals during March of 1996 and even into April, even May uh, 96 is a very cold month for May and uh, has uh, some snowfall, particularly in more northern and uh, hillier areas. Overall, the easterly winds that we have dominating through the winter of 95, 96 continue for the spring of 1996. And the pattern very much continuing for that spring as well. We've got 1999, which is quite a warm uh, spring, but also a bit mixed. Does have a potent cold snap in April, 
but uh, otherwise March and May uh, relatively mild, I think, in 1999. And then finally, we've got 2003. Um, and uh, this one actually starting the pattern of the hot summer. Um, so this is a warm and dry spring, very warm and dry spring. Winds often coming up from the south with high pressure way uh, over and to the east of the coach, low pressure out of the Atlantic. So uh, that's similar to uh, the extended summer that I was talking about uh, earlier on. Uh, you know, oh, uh, so so it begins in uh, in the spring. It, the pattern of the summer begins in the spring. pattern of summer goes on into the autumn. The peak of the pattern, of course, is in August of 2003, which is, uh, has a very, very, very hot spell of weather. But it's interesting how, you know, sometimes you get extended summers that do begin as early as, like, the spring months and carry on as, uh, as late as September and even October uh, sometimes. It's not unheard of for that to happen. I just very quickly want to go back and correct an error. So, ba -ba 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 -ba. just there, 1954. That is wrong. That should have been the spring of 1953. So, uh, it should have been uh, December 1952 and then spring 1953, not spring 1954. I've just been looking at my, uh, <laughs> my little notes that have been going along. So, that is my mistake. Never mind about that, though. Um, we shall uh, go on to our all years combined. Why don't we? do that. So, this is how all March... So, sorry about that, everybody. Not sure as well. That's my fault. Um, right. So, here we go, Ben. All March is combined. Following December, England will have a normal precipitation range of 79 to 98 millimetres. Looks like that. I am a bit rusty. You know, it takes you a couple of weeks to get into it when you've had a layoff. <laughs> That's my excuse. Uh, this is how all, all Marches are looking. So, a bit of a blocking signal actually around Greenland and up Scandinavia. Low pressure tends to be to the south. Winds often coming in from an easterly a direction there. And um, although we do have 954, by the way, in the mix, but, you know, it doesn't really matter because um, uh, that's diluted by all of the other years, if you get what I mean. But that should be 1953 there. Uh, anyway, never mind about that. We've got a, a bit of a rock signal, unsettled, quite a potentially coldest signal, I think, for the marches there. April, again, a little bit more anticyclonic, but this time more of a mid-Atlantic ridge, low pressure. So it could be a drier signal for the Aprils again. Uh, and maybe a little bit on the cold side as well. And then all Mays combined look like that with high pressure between Iceland and Norway. Low pressure is to the south winds coming in from the east. So May is a very easterly month. It's the most easterly of all of the months of the uh, year. And that is quite typical. So I suspect that would bring... Uh, love easterly winds. Sometimes we could get a lot of rain in the south from that. I expect there are years in there. <coughs> so sorry, but I expect there are years in there that are producing uh, relatively dryish easterly uh, winds as well. So it would be a little bit of a mixed bag with that. And then this is how all springs combined are looking following December. England rail precipitation range is 79 to 98 millimetres. Overall, quite an easterly signal. Quite a block signal as well. Fair amount of high pressure within the high latitudes. Lower pressure tends to be to the south. So certainly through the early part of the, uh, uh, of the season, you could ex expect quite a few cold snaps, I think, particularly from the east with uh, a few of those springs. Later on, of course, east winds aren't going to be cold in May. East winds are actually relatively warm. So you pay your money, uh, you take your choice. It's a transitional season. Okay, that's it for the first spring update. Do -do -do. We're back off and running <laughs> with the long range. So uh, there we go. We'll have another spring update for you. Um, next week, not sure what we're looking at next week, but uh, there will be uh, the second spring update being released next Sunday, same time, same place. And we'll do weekly spring updates all the way up to the end of February, where we will release the Gas Spring 2025 broadcast. Thank you so much to Richard for the uh, gift. Thank you to Shryam for sorting out the years for us. Hashtag Team Gab, always doing an incredible 
job. We're going to be live at 6 p.m. If you've got any questions about this uh, spring update, then uh, fire away on that, and I should do my best to answer those. And we'll have a look at trials, have a on Summer's Watch, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, quite an epic stream on the way at 6. But for the first spring 2025 update, guys, well, it's that's all for now, and thanks for watching.